Welcome to the second episode of Series 6, everyone. We promise we'll get to actually create characters in this episode. We can't wait to introduce you to our amazing people. But first, as usual, let's get a couple of announcements out of the way. Just a reminder, we started our brand new Discord server just last week. We have been having some great conversations in there, some really weird conversations, and some pretty <laughs> good ideas already. Um, so if you are not on board, please head on over to discord.charactercreationcast.com and log in. We would really love a chance to get to talk to you. Yeah, that would be wonderful to have as many of you in there as we can fit. And I believe Discord can fit a lot. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> also, if you like what you are hearing, there are a few ways to support us. Uh, first off, the One Shot Podcast Network has a Patreon. You can head on over to patreon.com slash one shot podcast to sign up for that. And if you go for the $5 tier or above, then you can get access to the Secret Archive, where you will soon have our own content in there. And it's going to be pretty fantastic. A reminder to everybody that I will be at Gen Con this year. I will be part of the One Shot Network panel on Saturday evening. And you can also find me around the convention all weekend. And I would love to meet some of you. So if you are going to be there, please feel free to send me a message on Twitter or on our fancy new Discord server. I would really like a chance to get to know some of you and meet up with people who are just as excited about characters as I am. Yeah, it's going to be quite the fun time and quite the epic Gen Con with all of the wonderful people that I've heard are going. All the wonderful people and not Ryan. I know. <laughs> so you know it'll be good. <laughs> Great, now we can have I'll fun. I'll be there in spirit. <laughs> I'll, I'll be haunting all of you somehow. Oh, that's spooky. Are you going to be dead? <laughs> not that you know of. I'll, I'll figure out astral projection until then. <laughs> All right, with that out of the way, we do have a review to read. Uh, we are down to the last couple, I believe, so if you want to, please leave one. But this one is titled Charming Plus Three, and it's coming from Doc Palindrome from the USA. They say, As a comedian, podcaster, and interviewer, I have full comprehension of how exhausting it can be to try to be endlessly charming, especially when working with a guest. Amelia and Ryan make it look effortless with multiple guests. I guess it helps that, like me, they have some of the warmest, most delightful people in the gaming spaces to join them, and it's also probably a big help that the very concept of a podcast about character creation might be the greatest idea of all time. They bring their knowledge, experience, and as noted charm to these in-depth discussions about my personal favorite part of playing tabletop RPGs. I can only hope that I one day become well-regarded enough in gaming spaces that they have me on for a GURPS episode. Ignoring the fact that this sincere review is also a subtle plug for my own stuff, thanks for making this for humans. That is an awesome review. Thank you so much, Doc Palindrome. I'm also just like really impressed that you managed to do a review and a plug, and I feel like you deserve some props for that. Like, good on you. I agree. I like, I, you know, <laughs> I, I know some people don't like that, but like A for effort, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, when you have such nice things to say as Doc Palindrome did, I don't think a little plug is going to hurt anything. That's true. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your review. And um, we are, like we said, running a little low on them. So if you have good things to say about our show and or your own show, uh, please leave us a rating <laughs> or a review. We will be very excited to read it and very excited to share it with all of you which will be extremely soon because there's only two left yeah get on it folks <laughs> <laughs> all right with all of that out of the way let's get to the show yeah enjoy abilities how do abilities work in this game abilities are just sort of the, the kinds of things that characters can do um you know 
we can climb, we can jump, we have language, we have different rates of movement, um, we have senses that are unique to, well, being human in, in the case of human characters, but then also um, in the case of cetacean characters, they have things like echolocation. Uh, and then with all the genetic and, and cybernetic modifications that are part of the setting, um, you can enhance those in, in unique, in direct ways, or you can supply completely new senses. So those are all the kinds of things that fall under the abilities category. Okay. And then uh, what about aptitudes? Aptitudes are sort of areas of expertise. There's a lot of skills. Again, it's a 90s game. So there's a lot more skills than might be in a, in a, uh, a more contemporary game. But those are kind of grouped in into areas, uh, for example, technology. So the use of technology, computers and damage control and, and those sorts of things. Um, in real life, we see people that seem to have proclivities with different kinds of things from artists to athletes to technologists. Um, and then the aptitudes are really just a way to sort of further refine the distinction of your character. Um, if you want to play someone who's good with technology, you have a higher aptitude score of one to three to three um, that governs those skills. Um, but maybe you want to be clumsy. So some of your um, physical skills would have a lower uh, ap uh, aptitude. Uh, and that number, one, two, or three, determines how many dice you get to roll when you're trying to get a success in a test for that skill group. Okay. And you only need one, basically one dice to roll a success. So say you had a... Um... Say you had an aptitude in technology, but the way that your character points lay out, like you're really good at electronics and mechanics, but maybe you're not, you know, maybe your computer skill is only like a two. Yeah. So on a D10, you're going to try and roll a two or less. Well, if, you're, if, you're, if your aptitude is three dice, your aptitude is three, you're like, I'm not totally trained in computers, but I, but I know kind of how things work. Like I, this is a thing that my brain works good at. Then yeah. you roll three dice. And hopefully one of those three dice, you know, gives you a better chance of, go of getting, you know, that two or less. So um, that's going to increase the pool that you have um, for, right. the, for the higher attributes or higher aptitudes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Very cool. All right. And then uh, the last thing that I think we had questions about would be biomods. Yeah. Um, so again, 90s cyberpunk. <laughs> right? You can't right. have a sci-fi game without body mods. Um, but again, we wanted them to seem like they were realistic. We wanted them to be purpose, have serve purpose, right? So I don't imagine in a real world someone would would be willing to spend that kind of money and that kind of physical trauma to acquire abilities unless they had a, a, a valuable purpose, unless there was reason for them to have them. So we tried to create all of the cybernetics and all of the genetic engineered biomods um, in in ways that sort of supported that idea, the supported sort of realistic use, realistic purpose. Um, and of course, there are, there are cosmetic modifications, um, but primarily they are um, based on the desire for functionality and, and in-game effects that would make sense for the characters um, that are using them. Okay, cool. Uh, then would there be anything else that you want to add uh, that we may need to know going into character creation? Yeah, uh, I did want to mention that we make a distinction. So a lot of games like D&D, &D, you know, you pick a race, right? Mm -hmm. In in Blue Planet, you pick a species. Yes. Um, and again, it, it, it's intended to sort of evoke the, the scientific rigor that we hoped was part of Blue Planet, but it also um, has specific meaning. Uh, the, I mean, the word species has a, a biological definition. Um, and because of the ubiquitousness of genetic engineering and the fact that some cetaceans have been uplifted and can be played as PCs, distinguishing species seems important. Um, yes. And so there are a number of different species that are modifications of humans. Uh, and then, of course, a number of different species that are cetaceans that can be played in the game. And so one of the first choices you, you make as you go through the character creation outline is your species. Um, and I just wanted to kind of point that out as a, as similar to, but distinct from the idea of race in a lot of old other games. Right. All right. Well, with all that said, then uh, let's go ahead and make some people. Let's make some people. 
before we get into creating the characters for this system, uh, Jeff unfortunately had to step away for a work meeting, so he will not be joining us. Uh, but he did give us uh, a quick rundown of what his character is going to be. Uh, so we can we can basically play off of that a little bit for when we put our characters together and what his character kind of means once we get to that point. So we will talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but for now, Rich, what is the first thing that we have to do when thinking about creating characters? <clears throat> sure. Well, when you get together um, to play the game... What I've done in most of my games is actually just decide on what level. <clears throat> so there's three different role power levels. There's everyday, there's exceptional, and there's elite. And it depends on what kind of game you want to play. The games that I've played have mostly been exceptional, which is kind of right in the middle. Yeah. Um, Jeff is big on discussing you know, both in the book <clears throat> and in person about the idea that you can have a an everyday person hanging out with an elite person in a game, and that's perfectly viable, and you can play the game that way, right? Yeah because of the way that the game is set up, and I think we're going to discuss this in more detail in the discussion session, the way the game kind of set up, it's not as swingy as, as some games. So there's not extremities in which, uh, you know, an elite person is uh, technically has some more skills and more, you know, a little higher rating in some skills than uh, an everyday person. But the everyday person doesn't, isn't going to feel like ineffective, right? Like around somebody who's elite. Um, so you could technically do a mix and match, or you can mix and match within the, within the system. So, um, the example I've mentioned, uh, before, and we'll mention again, probably is the fact that you could play elite characters, but have, who have, uh, the maximum attribute modifications of an everyday person. So someone like an old retired, you know, uh, older retired war veteran, um, has all these skills and are very good at these skills. Um, but maybe their physical attributes are slower than they used to be, right? So you can kind of mix and match those if you want. And that depends on the kind of game that you really want to play. And I think we've agreed to do the exceptional level. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> Middle of the road, but still, uh, well, exceptional. Right, yes. exactly. <laughs> um, and then, um, and that just gives you some basic ideas. You have a few points to spend to personalize your attributes. You generally get a certain number of what are called bio mods. Yeah. Uh, which are either like technology, like neural jacks and, you know, cybernetic limbs or whatever. It's a cyberpunkish kind of setting uh, or genetic modifications like okay. um, enhanced. Uh, it, there's an endocrine system, you know, enhancement you can get that clears poisons out of your system and protects you against disease, things like that. Right. It also tells you what aptitudes you get and aptitudes here. You, you Generally, you have a, a number in a skill. Uh, that's, well, you have a number and a skill that's between one and 10 or zero and 10. Yeah. And you have, uh, you add your attribute to that. So if you are doing a computer's check that you're trying to hack someplace, then, you know, you might use say intellect plus your computer skill, right? It's, you know, a lot of mechanic, a lot of mm -hmm. uh, systems use that kind of a thing. You come up with a target number, which will be between again, zero and 10 and you roll a D 10 and you try to get that number or less, right? And the, yeah. the more under the number, the better you do. Yeah. Well, aptitude means um, how many dice you actually roll to try and get that success. So if you have your basic training, then it's just one dice. Right. But if you have... Um, okay. One of the downsides of the system that's really not a part of the actual mechanics is the language. So there's, there's superior and there's strong. Both of them are S's, right? Yeah. There's also aptitudes, attributes, and right, and abilities. Mm -hmm. They all start with A's. So those are very that those are part of a system that if we do a third edition, then I it would be I'd want to be changing those things up because it right. makes it difficult to know which one you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, but superior means you're rolling three dice, and strong means you're rolling two dice. And that's usually for a big group of skills as opposed mm -hmm. to a single individual skill. Right. And then it gives you a certain number of uh, points to personalize your skills. And we'll get to that in a minute because your base skills in a bunch of things have to do with the backgrounds that you choose, right? Um, which is the big part of the character generation aspect of the game, which is fantastic. Uh, and then, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to choose a species. Now that after, after you figure out kind of what level you're doing, then you're getting into your personal character. 
and they're the game itself is a transhumanist game so a transhumanist game is typically a game like um eclipse phase or some other game in which we're living in a future in which either genetics or through mechanics or whatever there's modifications to humans and humans can modify themselves in some pretty extreme ways compared to how we look at things now right so in uh in blue planet you can technically play what's called a pure strain human there are really no pure strain humans so a pure strain human is someone who was born without any genetic modifications and has never modified themselves at all in their entire life. That's pretty much not going to happen on Poseidon. Um, you almost need the modifications to survive just on a daily basis. The next thing that's pretty common is a modified human. It's exactly the same thing, except you have some modifications after you were born. So you can uh, develop or, or uh, attach these uh, gene enhancements or, bio or uh, technological enhancements. Mm -hmm. um, then you have what's called a genie, which is a human genetic redesign. And that means that you were born with some modifications. So you may be what's called an alpha, which is basically a perfected quote unquote human uh, that has uh, you know, better ability scores as a base across the board. Um, they may choose to pick some higher level genetic modifications and things separately, um, but they're just kind of that human turned up a little bit, yeah. right? You also have what are called uh, aquaforms. And so before humans uh, landed on Poseidon for the first time, they genetically modified humans to become one of two types of aquaforms for their colonists. One's called divers and the other one are called squids. That's just their... Uh, colloquial terms for them. Mm -hmm. A diver, a diver is someone who can hold their breath for an hour, has increased myoglobin in their in their muscles. Um, basically, they're kind of like the dolphin version of humans. Uh, squids actually can breathe water, or, or breathe uh, air out of the water, so they have basically the equivalent of gills. Some people, when I talk to them, they're like, "Well, why don't you just? Why would you ever pick a diver?" I mean, why didn't you would just want to be in the water as long as you want at any time, all the time? Yeah, except the divers have a depth limit because of the way that physiology works and pressure works. The the actual uh, squids, sorry, squids have a de have a depth limit. They can only go down to about five hundred meters, which is still pretty deep. Yeah, but there's some limitations there. Divers can only hold their breath for an hour, but they can go as deep as they want. Basically, like sperm whales diving to you know <laughs> into the abyss. Uh, to hunt down giant colossal squid, um, they can hold their breath about an hour and a half. So a diver can go down as far as they want without having many or, or any physiological problems. Squids can stay in the water as long as they want. They just can't go down that far. Okay, so that makes depends, sense. Depends on which one you want to which one you want to do. So those are all the basic variants of humans, and with the amount of modifications genetic and technological modifications you can make you can you know those are basically those are just basic templates yeah um and you could have a modified human and an alpha human in the same group um and again the way the system is you'd think like oh i'd always want to play an alpha human and then because they're just better and then i'm just going to add a bunch of stuff to that template and then i'm just going to be great well the difference between an alpha human and a regular human yeah there's a difference but it's it's not going to play up as much as it would be in another system that would be super swingy right yeah. Yeah, yeah. um and then there are two non-human species as well that are in the core books uh which are cetaceans the bottlenose dolphins and killer whales and you mm -hmm. can play them as well and they have a, a long list of advantages and disadvantages as well. And then Ancient Echoes, which is one of the expansions for the game, one of the supplements, uh, expands out the number of cetaceans to a, a handful more. So you can play a pilot whale and a blue whale. And, oh, very and cool. Yeah, it will all have some subtle differences in their culture and their biology and what they what they do and how they look at the world, which is really right. pretty, cool. pretty cool. Right, exactly. Um, and then um, when you pick those things, uh, when you pick those species, it gives you your basic attributes, uh, attributes. So your build, your fitness, your agility, your dexterity, the things that are built into who you are as a body. And you get a couple of points to be able to modify those. They don't go up and down very much. There's a few things that are pretty high or pretty low, um, depending on what you're playing. But say like a normal human has a zero in everything. Yeah. Uh, a Silva, which is a... I just forgot to mention those. So there's two actual animal hybrids as well. Mm -hmm. um, they're humans that have a few genetic traits of a particular animal. And the only ones that became viable after these experiments 
were silvas, which were uh, which are gorilla modifications, and felines or cats. Yeah, uh, which have those modifications as well. A silva's build is three. That's pretty pretty buff for a mm-hmm. human. In comparison, a killer whale's build is twelve because yeah. it's huge, right? It but as far as the human variations are concerned, build, for example, means how much muscle mass do you have? Like how much how much of that physical body do you have to work with? Right, um, exactly. Transhumans have a one. Regular humans have a zero. So you can mm-hmm. see how it it help. It, it's it's not a huge variation. Yeah, there's even the spacers, and they get a minus one. Yeah, spacers get a minus one on build because they're built lighter to go into uh, zero gravity. Uh, spacers are built for g- zero G. So technically, you could have a game of Blue Planet in which you were never on Poseidon, which is the yeah. Blue Planet. You can have something because they um, they mine an asteroid belt as well. Oh, yeah. Um, and also, the amount of time it takes to get from Earth to Poseidon is six months in space. Mm. And so there's waylay sta- there's there's relay stations on either side of the wormhole uh, that mm-hmm. you have to deal with, and you have to go through a lot of physiological issues when you land. Mm-hmm. They call it, people who freshly land and come out of the the ships are have a variety of different nicknames. One of them, Spotties. Because you have these things attached to you that are monitors, but you have those monitors attached to you while you're in the suspended animation for six months. Oh, yeah. You're usually really weak because your your muscles have atrophied and you've got these like marks all over you and all you it's really easy to tell when somebody's a newbie yeah. uh, landing on the planet. Right. But spacers are designed to live and work in zero G. Yeah. So And they have so four arms. Like they the do. legs they, are arms. Basically. Right. They, yeah. Basically, their feet have been modified to have opposable thumbs. So yeah. because they don't need to walk very much, but their build is a little bit less because they're built lighter. And mm-hmm. again, it'll affect certain things in the game, but not a huge amount. So when you're rolling a, a skill, say you have a, a skill of six in something and you're going to add an ability or an attribute, that attribute, you know, say, for example, if it's fitness, well, a spacer has pretty good fitness. They're light. But they're in really good shape and they're modified to be in really good shape. Right. So if you're making a roll plus fitness, then you have a six plus one is seven, and then you're trying to roll a seven or less on a D10. Okay. S- skill tends to override in many cases your attribute. Your attribute kind of adds to it a little bit, but it's it's just a, a small variation, usually, right. unless you're a killer whale or an orca, depending on what you're rolling. And that is it. And then there's a few points that you can use to modify those up and down. Oh, wonderful. Um, but the um, the biggest thing that's involved in character generation is this thing I alluded to earlier, where you talk about your background and build it up. And there have been other games, particularly around that era, that use this kind of a system in a way or some variation of the system. Like Traveler is notorious for being able to die in character generation because you're <laughs> rolling on all these tables and whatnot. But in Blue Planet, what you're doing is you're picking an origin Meaning, where did you come from? Where did your family come from? Where did your genetic heritage come from? Mm -hmm. Right? A variety of different locations on Earth, or it can be in space, or it can be on Poseidon, and in different cultures or in corporate states on Poseidon. Then you pick two backgrounds. So, for example, you could be born on Earth, but your background is not like, it's not like everybody on Earth is the same person. Yeah. So... You're born on Earth, but your background might be um, you're out. You you grew up in the wilderness and on a farm. Yeah. Right. So Earth gives you a certain number of points and a certain type of range of skills that almost everyone from Earth knows a little bit about. And then this background of being a farmer and then maybe going from a farm to a university. Right. Because you pick two backgrounds. You can have some knowledge of the farming stuff and some knowledge of university stuff. And then you pick three to five professions. And those are like, what do you do for a living? Right. Yeah. So these combinations, these puzzle pieces that, that, that click together, each of those packages has a certain rating and a certain skill. Typically, it's between, usually, it's between like one and three, but it can go as high as five for yep. really exceptional professions. And you're just adding all those together. So if you were if you were born <clears throat> as a native on Poseidon, you're going to have some like say survival skill and some sailing skills. Mm-hmm. If you also take a native background, meaning you were not just born on the planet, you were raised in native villages, you're going to have some more of those things probably. Yep. Right. And then if you were uh, had another background of say, well, let's pick the one that I was kind of looking at, which is an a, an urban background, meaning mm-hmm. that. 
I did have native family members, but I grew up in the back alleys of one of you know Poseidon's larger cities. So I also have a little bit of a crime, you know, a few, mm-hmm. few points here and there and some crime stuff. And then I tried to get out of that by going into the local native militia and learning how to be a pilot because I wanted oh, yeah. to get out of the water and into the air because it was oh, fascinating. That's very cool. So all of those things, when you pick all these packages, they add all these skills together, and then you end up having this really interesting, unique for your character combination of skill points yeah. you know, across a wide range of skills um, that make you uh, interesting, but also broad. Like, makes there's a de- depth to your character. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one of the things that I had trouble with when I was uh, looking through this system in mm-hmm. order to uh, prep for this episode was the character points uh, and how oh, yeah. they relate to skills. Um, mm-hmm. I, didn't, I didn't read through the whole book, obviously, because uh, uh, there's a lot in this book. Mm-hmm. Um, so I may have skipped over it. But I, I'm of the understanding that when you perform a skill, you have a skill rank, basically, like yep. say, say through all of these backgrounds and professions, you have a skill rank of five in a certain skill. What attribute attaches to that skill when you actually roll it and that's what i find interesting about the game is that it's whatever is appropriate okay and and in many cases it's not what you think yeah so for example um let's see if we can, let's see if i can think of some interesting combinations so you know if you're doing a computer check you might think intellect yes right so that seems like a pretty handy thing but what if you're not trying to hack into something Mm-hmm. What if you're trying to physically hotwire a computer, a, a, a vehicle that has a computer chip that runs it, but you have to get into an area of the ship to be able to manually be able to rewire this thing? Okay. So you might need a computer skill, right? It could be yep. mechanics, could be electronics, could be something yep. else, right? Let's say, let's, say the, let's say the moderator says like, oh, this sounds like an electronics. Right, mm-hmm. you're trying to hotwire, but instead of knowing the system, you know the electronics. How manually dexterous are you to be able to get into this space to be able oh, okay. to hotwire this thing? Like so you know where to go. Do, you, yeah, you might do electronics plus dexterity. Yeah. Right? Okay. Or what if you need to power your way through something? Like so, mechanics. Okay, you have the knowledge of mechanics, but you literally need to pry something this one piece of of a of a engine open to get to something else you might do build okay you know, or you might do strength which is one of the derived attributes which is based on um build okay so you know you can you can do what you want with the combination it's not a it's not a given it's okay. not like computers is under intelligence right it's, it's whatever is appropriate to the situation that you're in, and that may change. Yeah, like uh, another thing that I, I had uh, kind of thought of as you were talking is uh, I'm kind of looking at the medic type for my uh-huh. character. Yeah. And so if I was doing surgery with the surgery skill, yeah. but it was a long surgery, like a 12-plus hour surgery, that sounds like surgery plus endurance. Yep. It could very well be surgery plus endurance. That's a great. It's a great uh, way to look at it. That's and awesome. it's 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 what ability. It's what um, attribute is most applicable at the time. Of course, right. in, intellect has something to do with it. Of course, manual dexterity has something to do with it. Yeah. You know, but what if this? What if the narrative is telling you that okay, the person has got this critical critical wound, yeah. and this bullet. You've decided that this critical wound that was rolled is this bullet right next to the spine because the yeah. moderator wants to make it more complicated in some way and make it more interesting dramatically, then you can say, well, nope, it's manual dexterity. And you might be like, Oof, not yeah. my best. <laughs> you know, like, I'm, I'm really good at knowing what I'm supposed to do with the medicine, but can I get in there to get it done? That makes is, sense. Is the, is the challenge, right? That's um, very cool. Yeah. Uh, another thing that I, well, there's a few things that I find interesting. They have a, an awareness attribute, which is basically like perception in other other games. But he breaks it down. They, the system breaks it down into chemical awareness, hearing, intuition, touch, and vision. Chemical mm-hmm. being smell and taste, right? Okay. That uh, makes hearing sense. is obvious. Hearing is obvious. Touch is obvious. Vision is obvious. Uh, but intuition is also something that you might roll. And in in particular, because of the way that 
that dolphins and whales were uplifted. Uh, I had mentioned this it's at one point earlier, this idea that that cetaceans were uplifted. Part of that process involved basically removing this barrier between their subconscious or intuitive mind and their conscious mind. Yeah. And they live, they live entirely in this almost, I wouldn't call it a dream world, but they, they, they live moving into and out of conscious and subconscious ideas in a way that we don't. Right. And because of that, they have a natural increase to their intuition, right? So their intuition is uh, like a plus two or a plus three or something, depending on who it is, on what species of cetacean. Yeah. And um, in Ancient Echoes, again, which is their cetacean supplement, they talk about maybe allowing cetacean characters to make uh, intuition roles uh, during the game to get certain insights into things as they piece together both sensory information and intellectual information in a subconscious way to get clues about things, which I think is really interesting to me. Oh, that's fascinating. But your awareness score covers all of those senses. So say if I had an awareness of zero, yeah, right? And all of my other... Uh, sub sense sub ones would also be zero. You okay. can choose to, without spending any points of any kind, you can choose to increase or decrease any individual one of those as long as the average turns out to be zero. Oh. So if you wanted to be real, have really good eyesight, yeah. you could bring that to a plus two and then say bring down, you know, chemical and intuition or something by one okay. each. And it, it allows you just to have a choice. Mm -hmm. You can just choose to make them go up and down. So because they're averaging out about the same. Yeah. Right. And you can do that to a certain extent, which I think is really interesting, particularly when you're playing cetacean characters that involved so much in their hearing and their yeah. eyesight's not as great. Right. So it's okay. solid. It's good enough. But, um, you know, their hearing is much more impressive. Okay. So what, when we're playing or when we're actually creating the characters um, and it says, okay, you, you start with these plus and minuses as your uh, species that you selected. Yes. Um, and we're playing exceptional characters. So yes. that means you have uh, three attributes that you can increase or you can put three points into your attributes. You can put three points into something, right. And so, so if, if I put one of those points into awareness and it started at zero, now my awareness is one and the average of all those is now is one. one. Yes. So all of those would become oh. one and you could go up and down with it from there. That's exactly right. I know where um, one of my plus ones is going. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that's how that's how that ends up going. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to once we get uh, pick all of our our origins, our backgrounds, and our professions, you're going to have a basic level of skill in a wide range of stuff. Okay. So so the stuff that I picked, I have a native origin, I have a native and that street background I was talking about, and for professions, I put a point in crime because I had actually had to survive on the street a little bit and had to maybe do some questionable things. Okay. I had, a, I, had a, I had one professional level in survival, and then I put three out of the five that I had into expert aerospace, which is my professional military training, or oh, at okay. least the native militia training to become a pilot. Oh, okay. So all, all of those things together, between the native and the survival and that kind of stuff, um, like my fishing ended up being six, my orienteering ended up being four, but the criminal elements uh, and the military training elements ended up having my, you know, like stealth skills actually had some points in them. Oh. I've got a few points in meteorology, actually, okay. which is which is from the expert aerospace, learning about weather patterns and flight and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I even have a point in law because I had a little bit of crime background. Now, okay. my skill level in in law right now is only one. I haven't spent my 10 points yet, which means that I'd have to roll a one on a D10 to get a skill, to get, to get a success. So I don't have much knowledge of it. Okay. But one of the things that they also talk about in the game is just, you can be like, okay, well, this is what somebody with any training in, in, you know, law would know. Right. And you can just tell people that without having to make rolls for everything. Right. You don't have to roll on everything. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. And then even though your character, you were talking about doing being a medic, my character also has several points in first aid because again, survival background, living out in the wilderness background, military background. So I, I'm actually not terrible at just basic first aid. Right. So um, it allows me to have some skill in that without overshadowing you, but also giving my character some more depth than just, I'm just the pilot. That makes sense. And it sounds like um, when you are doing your attributes, you can lower some of them from your base attributes and then raise others. So you're not stuck with just those three points. 
you're right. stuck with uh, those three points. Plus, you can lower some and raise some other compared to right. a chart that's in the book. Yeah, and the chart's pretty straightforward. Like, um, you know, raising raising them and lowering them. It, it's basically a point for point system until yep. you start getting into like, you know, plus three above what your baseline is. Then it's a little more expensive, but it's basically a point by point system. Yeah, so, that sounds right. You know, if if you want to play a regular human, you know, like or a modified human, and you want your you want to be in good shape and kind of be a, a broad shouldered big human, then by all means, you know, you can buff up your build. And then, you know, if you want to play to the uh, stereotypes, you could, you know, reduce your agility by one or reduce your intellect by one or whatever, yep. you know, and, and do that. So there is some, there is quite some variety. And once you, the, the whole character generation system is really telling you, where did you come from yep. before you start doing this game? Like, who are you before yeah. you start? And okay. you can look at that and have a better grasp of that. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. So I guess, uh, you you talked a little bit about your background. I talked a little bit about what I kind of wanted, what role I kind of wanted to be. Mm -hmm. Um. So, and we talked about the attributes, uh, and a little bit about the skills as well about how those combine. Yes. So, I was kind of thinking, um, going into this of creating a cat character. Mm -hmm. So one of the hybrids. I, yeah. yeah, one of the hybrids. I don't know why, aside from it's just fun to play weird things. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think I'm going to make a cat and I'm going to try to make them a medic of some sort. That's perfect. And the hybrids are pretty rare in, in the general populace, which is something to keep track of, like while you're playing the game. But, uh, of course, all the unusual stuff yeah. is pretty, uh, is, is pretty uh, attractive to players. So when we show up on a place, if you're a hybrid, then uh, it's going to be something noted. And mm -hmm. uh, as uh, as part of the game too, you know the you're not like you don't look like a cat. You you look like a human with some feline features. Yes. Right. If you're playing a Silva, you don't look like a gorilla. You look like a human who's got like a, a more prominent brow and maybe extra facial hair, right? And a, and a mm -hmm. really really buff build. You know, yes. um, it's just important to, to note that these genetic modifications are bits and pieces of animal genetics that have been mm -hmm. spliced into human genetics. This was before the xenosilicate long john was discovered. These uh, hybrids were done basically before that, which was more crude genetic engineering than we develop later. Yeah. Giving people a few ideas of what, like, say, some of the origin packages are. There's a yeah. bunch of them. But one of them could be you're from the moon, like our moon. Yes. So Luna, the tall and graceful, many lunars are employed by the incorporate, uh, but fiercely maintain their independence. Okay. So there's a, there's a reference in the game a lot about incorporates or incorporate states. And so after we, we, we originally put send some colonists to Poseidon, we were intending to send um, backup supplies and stuff to Poseidon and more colonists, but then earth had this ecological disaster that lasted as as Jeff said like 75 years. Yeah. And then what happened was is that corporations started buying failing countries. Oh. And so the actual earth is now run by uh corporations called the incorporate states that have bought huge chunks of yeah. failing countries and have built them up as corporations. Oh, that's very cyberpunky. It's very cyberpunky, right? So the incorporate states all have different um they also have. They also want the xenosilicate, and they want to pop. They want to. They want to uh, populate yeah. um, Poseidon and that kind of thing. So you could have an incorporate background. So you were raised or in and around one of these uh, one of these organizations, right? Mm -hmm. You could live in Earth orbit. It could be one of your origins. You could yeah. have been uh, a, a colonial, meaning someone who came during that second wave. Uh -huh. You're not a native, but you're a colonial. And that colonial can be a pioneer, so you can live out in the wilderness, but you weren't born there necessarily, mm -hmm. or your family was kind of come, but they were later. Or you can have a colonial, like urban liver. You can you yeah. came to Poseidon to get away from something on Earth, and you live in the big city, and you don't want to yep. go in the water. You don't care about the water. Yeah. Right? You want to run crime, or you want to run a business, or you just want to get away from something on Earth that you managed to buy your way onto the ship to get uh -huh. here. Right? So there's lots of different origins that you can do. Oh, there's um, so many. Yeah. 
There's so many. And there's a couple of specialized cetacean origins as well. Okay. And then the back, background packages kind of play off that. So you can also say, for example, you know, you could have a background that's also in corporate. Yep. So you could live on Luna. You were born on Luna and uh, that's where your, your home growing up culture was. But then you were really associated with, you know, an incorporate company yeah. that, um, that maybe had a business interests on Luna. Right? Okay. Um, some of the other ones are like rural university street, right? So yeah. say you have Luna and then you were, uh, born in around and within an incorporate state, like, you know, city on the moon. And then you went to university. Yep. So there's your, there's your origin and two backgrounds. And then your professional packages are basically, what did you study at university? And it could be anything. Yeah. And that's where it really gets huge. So it's, it's arts and entertainment, it's administration, it's crime, it's diplomacy, it's yep. athletics, it's law enforcement, it's medicine, it's it's just military survival. It's any kind of stuff you want to do for those professional yeah. packages are much broader. That makes um, sense. And again, these are all puzzle pieces that fit together to make your foundation for your unique combination of a background character. And when mm -hmm. you start the game, you start the game, you already have this idea of who you are and how you got there which I think is really nice. And other games sometimes don't have that. You're trying to figure that out as you play, mm -hmm. which is also fun, but this gives you a, a different grounding. Yeah, that makes sense. Very cool. Okay, so I think we probably know enough to go through all of the character selections. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? I think so. Very cool. All right, so um, we'll just select our attributes and and all of the profile stuff and training packages and through the magic of podcasting we will uh be back shortly Make it sound with... coherent exactly. <laughs> all right so welcome back <laughs> <laughs> all right so basically uh let's see what were you thinking about uh amelia for your character um do you want me to start with my species yeah please we haven't heard that yet okay um i am going to pick a dolphin Ooh. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. Very nice. And now <laughs> these rich are like actual dolphins, not yeah. as opposed to the genetically modified humans that are like humans with feline features. This is a dolphin. It is, it is not a, a it is a straight up bottlenose dolphin or a orca, which is a killer whale. Those mm -hmm. are the two basic species of cetaceans you can play from the basic book. Uh, though I mentioned earlier that Ancient Echoes has three or four more uh, belugas, pilot whales, and that kind of thing, commons, mm -hmm. um, that have subtle variations and different culture, actually. Each of them has a different culture and history and based on when they were uplifted and some other stuff. It's fascinating. It's such a good book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. Wonderful. Very cool. Yeah, and I, I'm playing a cat person, part of the, uh, what is it, the variant? Or whatever they're called hybrids hybrids yes the hybrid uh cat person and like i said i'm going for a medic uh and rich what uh what species and mm -hmm. stuff did you select I, i'm picking the diver uh which is a human aquaform uh that i mentioned a little earlier they tend to have a, a thick thicker layer of um of fat for okay. insulation um they have uh nictating membranes and modified eyes to be able to see underwater right. um and they have you know slight modifications to swimming. They're not nearly as good, even close, as a dolphin, but they're much they're better than hum, regular human swimming. Very cool. Uh, they can they can dive to any depth, and uh, they can hold their breath for about an hour, and have some other some other um, not a, minor modifications. Nice. Yeah, I forgot to mention for mine that uh, I come with two bio mods effectively as a natural yes. talent, I guess, which is amplified hearing and night vision. Yes. So I and kind of same, start with those. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of the things that are not, if there are these pre-generated packages, then they you have these modifications. And I have the same yeah. thing. You can get increased blood oxygenation as a regular human. Yeah. And modify that. It allows you to hold your breath for 10 or 20 minutes, but it's not quite as good as a diver. But you can no. do that and just not be a diver. And yeah. that allows you to literally, I mean, and the holding their breath doesn't apply to just underwater. So you yep. get tear gas or gas that's going on yep. or other stuff and you don't want to breathe that in and inhale poisons. That's yeah, awesome. So. That other really like that. Now, speaking of biomods, when we picked the exceptional biomods, it says two to four minor, one to two major. Is that mm -hmm. what we start with? 
That's what you start with. Okay. And then there is a monetary system of credits and that kind of stuff yeah. um, that you can use for the for the system. And I think of all of the things that are really 90s about the game, it's this kind of credity system that's for buying biomods and, and, and money. It's like another resource that is yeah. always, I think money is always overly complex in a lot of games. Yeah. Um, and it's always not quite right. <laughs> right. You know, it isn't quite, it's not easy to relate to. Um, even in D and D or something like that with gold, it's like, well, how much does this magic item cost and does it, and do we just throw it all out and we just give it, you know, it's really tough. So, um, there's some real specifics about how much things cost. And when you do get a bio mod, like how much time it takes to get the bio mod and, yep. and, and that kind of stuff. So, um, that granularity feels like the most nineties thing of the game more than. Yeah, anything. that makes sense. Um, so I haven't picked any of my bio mods yet but i'll probably do that for when we uh post the characters online yeah so everybody can see idea. that um, um yeah because i know that we we're probably we're pretty limited on time right now i know jeff will be back at some point to we'll go over the discussion session um, um so what we'll do is we'll just uh put our bio not mods on our character sheets for when we upload them so you at the home you can go to our website and check those out under the character sheet uh, blog section. So that'll be pretty sweet. Let's see. After you do your species and you kind of figure out your base attributes and stuff like that, um, then usually it's uh, picking the origins and the backgrounds and the professional packages. Perfect. Yes. All right. And I like these because it, it really groups all the skills together. So yeah. you have to spend a lot of time saying like, you know, okay, if I have this kind of education, mm -hmm. what skills go with that? I like that it's all right there in front of you and I don't have to spend and, a ton of time flipping through and figuring right. out. And if you don't know, if you don't want to pick and choose your own things, there's an, actually a whole section in the book that's just called roles. Yeah. And if you want to call them anything close to classes, you can. If you're like, I don't know what all this is. I just want to play a, a, uh, an, a corporate like mm -hmm. espionage dude. Right. I yeah. just want to play some guy who breaks into corporate things and steals corporate secrets. Well, there's a role that just shows that and says, oh, well, if you want to do that, then consider taking these packages in this combination. And there you go. So it's just basically like a pre-made package. You can just take it if you want and then modify it yeah. how you want with your own points. And then you're good. Right. That makes or sense. I want to I want to play a, you know, I want to play a, a, a native insurgent, you know, woman who leads a, you know a small group of insurgents against the colonists or whatever. Yeah. And then got a the role for that. And it shows you kind of how to build that. It's okay. really in order level. Very yeah. cool. Well, I guess um, so, I've got all of mine selected. Go for it. Cool. Tell us what you picked. All right. So my training packages, um, I went for uh, my origin was native. So I know, I understand that uh, the, uh, the cat people and the the silvas um right. they haven't been here that long about 20 to 25 years or so right yeah so the so the silvas and the and the cats were a secret program that were military focused and there that's why yeah. there's not that many of them but then they were outed like the yep. company that made them were outed and then the geo which is this big you know kind of the heroic quote unquote organization came in freed them trying to give them a place to live um Though they haven't been on Poseidon very long, they have been out for 20 or 25 years. So you could technically be a native, sort of, yes. because your parents were born there. Yes, it so might, fit, might fit better into colonial, colonial, uh, colonial rural, rural, maybe. Oh, God, mm -hmm. I can't say that at all. Um, <laughs> but you can definitely figure out a native way of doing it, saying that you yeah. were born there and you consider yourself from the planet. Yeah, I would say I consider myself from the planet, uh, born and raised here by non-native parents. Mm -hmm. um, and but you then, would have probably been raised somewhere like where they wanted to get away from it all. Yes. And so lived in and around, like in a native village. Yeah, so that's what I was picturing too. More native than from anywhere else. Right? And I was kind of picturing my, my dad being kind of this medic as well. Sure, um, yeah, so oh, it would be perfect. So he probably said, "Okay, we're gonna we're gonna go to this planet, um, and we're gonna find a small village, and we're gonna start a family while I help the village be be medics and stuff, or be yeah, a yeah. medic." Yeah. And then I I basically picked that up from him. And he probably learned a lot about native healing and how the yep. different 
things because there's a lot of different a lot of different bacteria there's a lot of different culture cultural yeah. things that are there a lot of different plants and and uh, medicinal things the natives have learned to use so yeah, yeah definitely that, that, that sounds fascinating to me very cool yeah so i'll go with that and then my backgrounds i chose native and university so i learned a lot of stuff about from living here and also uh after i uh, quote unquote came of age and everything I went to university um, and learned my professional skills which I chose was medicine at the expert level and science at the specialist level nice excellent yeah. so there's basically that three those three levels so there's mm -hmm. like the, the 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 normal kind of basic level right then yep. you've got that specialist level and the expert level yeah. And uh, you get five professions you can choose. Each level counts as one of those professions. So you picked one at three, use three points for one and two points for the other. Exactly. Perfect. All right. All right. Uh, go ahead, uh, Amelia. What did you choose? Okay. So I also chose uh, native for my origin. Um, and then. Uh, yeah, and cetaceans were actually uplifted before they found this xenosilicate on Poseidon. So there were initial native dolphins and killer whales that came with the human modified, the aquaform modified humans with the original settlement. So awesome. That's perfect. Yeah. We've been here since the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So you've had, you probably had several, I mean, your grand grandfather or grandmother or whatever was probably here before you were. So yeah. Yeah. Definitely, definitely feeling like this is your home. That's yes. cool. Um, and then for my uh, backgrounds, I picked also picked native and university. So mm -hmm. born and raised here and then had a formal education. That's awesome. So it kind of sounds like we probably know each other maybe from uh, college or from university, uh, if that's something that would be uh, interesting for our background. Absolutely. Yeah. That'd be awesome. I think that'd be really cool. Because yeah. since you both have native and university together, it's like, oh, we're both here, you know, studying, but we have these unique backgrounds. And I think that Ryan, your character would find hers fascinating because you oh, yeah. were technically born here, but she's she's here. Like yeah. she's mm -hmm. really from here. So um Yeah, I she, like that a lot. I imagine her being fascinated by you because you're you that's not an it's not usual. It's not yeah. common. Exactly. Yeah, that's really cool. Nice. And yeah, then and what then about professions? For my professions, I picked dancer at the expert level. Oh, nice. <laughs> and, um, and then I picked uh, diplomacy uh, at the uh -oh. specialist level. Oh, that's awesome. See, and that, that works out really, really well, too, because of the way that dolphin culture works in the, in the world as well. Um, mm -hmm. Because there's, there's the oral part of being like a diplomat, right, that we think of. But the way that dolphins and humans interact are different within them, their own cultures and other cultures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And physical expressions are really key to dolphin communication as well as, you know, just echolocating and, and what they call sound pictures and all that kind of stuff. So basically like this expert dancer is almost as if you're also an expert orator in a right. way for dolphins, which I think is really, really cool. Yeah. Which is kind of how I pictured it as, um, like movement being incredibly important to the sort of language interpretation. Um, right. And so putting the two together seemed to be a good cultural diplomat. Mm -hmm. Which is important because we were talking about doing like an emergency rescue and response team. Yes. We're going mm -hmm. into a wide range of areas, then it would be good to have somebody to do the talking no matter oh, what. Oh, definitely. definitely. Especially someone with a native background. Yep. Yeah, well, we're going to have a lot of that. Yes. Because <laughs> I also took uh, the native background. Oh, um, nice. And I, uh, but I took, went in a bit of a different direction. As opposed to university, I actually was raised in a, in, a, in a poor part of one of the major cities on Poseidon. Um, and so I think what happened was is that my family was lived on one of the islands near Sierra Nuevo, which is where the civil war is happening. And we were run out of that um, cool. due, to the, due to the war and had to find some place just to live. Yeah. Uh, and I'm thinking, though I, I don't usually do like orphans in my games for my characters, I think my <laughs> character ended up having to maybe live with an uncle or an aunt somewhere okay. in a big city because um, my parents had, had 
been killed in this conflict yeah. and, and just had to survive in the street for a while and then work his way out of that okay um, by joining the like uh, the native militia and learning how to become a pilot because even though he's a diver and loves diving of course he does that all the time so mm -hmm. all he can think about is being in the sky yeah exactly he, he want you know you want the thing that you can't have right and so mm -hmm. he learns how to be a pilot and uh and fly and work with the militia nice that's um, awesome yeah but he's also got a little bit of that he's got a little bit of crime so i did a i did uh one of my professional packages in survival because mm -hmm. he's had to live both on the streets and out in the wild one in crime so he's got some basic criminal background stuff and okay. then uh the expert level in military aerospace that's awesome so he can he can pretty much fly anything very cool so that's yeah. really cool and then Jeff had told us a little bit about what he was going to do as well. Yeah. Um, which was a Silva GEO military, former military personnel. So someone who yeah. was also as a, as a native kind of a thing like you, um, he was formerly a native culture GEO corporate liaison. Mm hmm and then had discovered that, what did he say? He said he had, just, he had realized that uh, even though he was part of emergency rescue teams, he's kind of an EMT with military training, yeah. that the under there was an underserved population, which was the yes. native population in zones like the Sierra Nuevo Civil War Zone that were yep. not being handled, which plays into my background beautifully. Because oh, yes, it does. I want to go back into that space and, and, help, and help these people like I didn't get help when I was a kid. Exactly. And so he decided to kind of peel off a little from the GEO, get a little GEO funding, but start this independent operation with us and probably met us at various times during his previous career to bring this team together. Mm -hmm. which I think it sounds awesome. Yeah. And I, I would imagine that um, he probably, um, or his character's female, uh, she probably approached me to be a medic. And yeah. then we were thinking, well, we need a, uh, a good diplomat of the group. And I'm like, hey, I know somebody. Yeah, well, I, went to, I went to university with this amazing yeah seat. Yeah, this that'd be awesome, awesome friend of mine, and so we got kind of all pulled together because of uh, Jeff's character. Yeah, um, that's really cool. I, I like that uh, that kind of pieced together origin story of our group. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and I like the the setup allows us to go into this civil war zone. I know Amelia has mentioned that she loves this kind of socio political aspect of the setting. Mm -hmm. She's nodding, nodding her head. So that would be <laughs> that. I love the kind of native versus colonial, yeah. um, political political bent. Um, also, I love doing the rescue and medical and the exploration of unknown mm -hmm. areas of of the planet, which is really cool. So we can do all of that to maybe send into you know rescue people or rescue something from a, yeah. a previously unmapped island kind of a thing. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which I, I think it. is really interesting. Yeah. Very so cool. then we have the kind of game we kind of want to run. Whoever's running this game for us, uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, have some ideas of where to go, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, we're probably not dealing with crime lords, but no. we might with some smuggling or maybe we get inadvertently and in, like we 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 get a we get a um we get a distress signal from a downed ship on an island. We yeah. go to go figure out what it is. And turns out it was some smugglers dealing with the uh, Russian crime mafia that is mm -hmm. in some of the major cities. And then maybe we get tied into that. Like there's so many different stories that you can do with, with, with that. Yeah, definitely. So, that sounds yeah. really awesome. Um, yeah, and I think the only thing that we, we have left is our profiles and what we look like and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, so if we could go over that really quick, just the profiles and the quick description, that'd be cool. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so for mine, uh, my goal is altruism. Uh, so I think that's just like, you like helping people. You, your goal in life is to help people. Uh, motivation is compassion. Um, I help people because uh, I'm compassionate for their plight and I want to help them be uh, better and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, attitude is optimistic because no matter how much bad there is in the world, there's always hope. Player's choice. This was an interesting one because this is an added little quirk or feature of your character that's 100% up to you. So I took a little bit of time thinking about this and I thought of uh, he listens to classical music when he needs to focus. It's one of his little quirks. I love it. I'm trying to figure out if that bugs my character or he likes it. 
<laughs> I don't know yet. I'm not quite sure. Might That's awesome. That play. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, just the way my character looks, uh, I know the cat people have a very short hair, uh, full body uh, fur, basically. Um, so I went with gray fur with uh, black stripes. Um, mm -hmm. And eyes are blue. Hair color is black and his hair is wavy. And the special trait of him, which is another interesting thing, they give you this special section of what your character is like. Um, I picked a black patch of fur over my left eye. Just nice. something something specific that you would see kind of on a cat because they can be all sorts of different colors in this uh, setting, which is inter interesting. Yeah. What about you, Millie? Um, so for my goal, I picked enlightenment. Um, oh, interesting. I know that's, yeah, that's like kind of, it's a very Amelia choice <laughs> uh, and I'm aware of that. That's fine. <laughs> um, lean into it. Lean into it. Yep. I know what I'm about. <laughs> um, and then for my motivation, I picked social, um, that seemed like a good, a good fit for a diplomat to kind of nice. just meet more people, diplomat. learn about people. <laughs> right. Um, and then for my attitude, I picked disciplined. Um, Cause I think Ooh. that that's a thing that you would have to be as a dancer. Mm -hmm. And a diplomat. Um, and a diplomat. And a diplomat. Yep. Yeah. You have to learn to. Dancing diplomat. That's awesome. Dan the dancing diplomat. That's, yeah. Sounds like um, a horrible seventies TV show. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> Um, I don't, I don't really have anything right now for my player's choice or I, I, I feel like those are the kinds of things that I always want to kind of play out and see what happens, yeah. you know? I like that um, idea. Yeah, and, definitely. And for look, I look like a dolphin. Pretty much. I mean. What? All dolphins look alike? <laughs> yes. <laughs> As a human, I'm saying to me. But, um, <laughs> but come on, her, her ultrasonic sort of uh communication that's got its own flavor yes that's true that's true that's true <laughs> what might be unusual for you actually as a native maybe you're a native but you're because in a lot of cases you know you're going to be dealing with a lot of native threats as well mm -hmm. so a lot of a lot of dolphins and whales like have certain nips and cuts and you know that kind of stuff maybe you are unusually not like that maybe oh. Maybe as a dancer, you have either gotten modifications or gotten healed or done things so that you have very minimal amount of scarring. Oh, so it might yeah, actually but... be very difficult for us to tell that you were even a native at all. Like you, you don't look. You're a native. You don't look like any native I've native seed I've ever met. That's really that'd interesting. Be, that'd be interesting. Oh, I like that. Nice. Very cool. Um, you, Rich. Yeah, for me, I, I, my goal is freedom. For some nice. obvious reasons, mm -hmm. I think from his background, uh, motivation yeah. is pride he wants to be the best at this thing that he loves so much, which is flying. But I don't see that as an arrogance kind of pride. I think it's more of just like this motivation of like, I want to do this because I want to be in the air. And if I'm going to be in the air, I'm going to do it right. And I'm going to do it the best. Mm -hmm. Right. And then uh, attitude optimistic because he feels like what he grew up with is, can't get worse. Yeah. It's all. It's always. It's a little bit less. More like the oh, there's always hope, and more like no, I've seen hell. This mm -hmm. isn't it. We're fine, <laughs> right? <laughs> so um, I think that's more where his optimism comes from instead of a, a pessimistic attitude about the world, which he may also have, but mm -hmm. optimism about how things will come out. Um, and then he's kind of like with many divers actually, and and the way. Things are kind of described in the future and on Poseidon. Uh, he has a very Polynesian looking, he happens to be of Polynesian descent, but he is also very Polynesian looking, you know, kind of that, that little bit heavier muscular build uh, comes from both his genetics as a diver, uh, genetically modified dive uh, aquaform, and then okay. his back, uh, background as well. Oh, very cool. Um, and then for special, I actually had the opposite of what I was sharing with Amelia, which is he's got a lot of scars. Oh, okay. Um, both from the war itself and living on the streets and also having yeah. to wrestle with a few um, hungry locals. Ugh. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's what I have. Very cool. Uh, it sounds like we've got a pretty solid party here, especially when we consider Jeff with his, uh, his Silva that is kind of our enforcer from what it sounds like. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A little bit of muscle. Yeah, because it yeah. sounds like uh, Jeff chose a, a thing where if things really went down physically or firefight, uh, his character would be able to help us out of that situation. Yeah, we, and and uh, we've we've mentioned off mic at some point as well. This system is it can be potentially pretty deadly. Yeah. Um. In in a way that things can get critical quickly. Like when you if guns are being pulled, something's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. And so, yeah. but if it does go wrong, then uh, then Jeff's person can is most likely to help us get out of that while the rest yep. of us are running for our lives. Yes, and yeah. I can help her out with any wounds that uh, she incurs. And, right, uh, and we all have a little bit because I think uh, he said that she's uh, an EMT as well, yeah. so she might mm -hmm. have some medical background, and I have a little first aid, and you've yeah. got the heavy medical stuff, so. Yeah, I like it. I really like I, it. I really like how this group has come together. I really want to play this seriously. I know. <laughs> but that's what we come away from every one of these saying, though. It's yeah. like, okay, I'm ready to play this now. <laughs> but now I really mean it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it every time. Oh, awesome. My well, I'm glad that you guys enjoyed that as much as I do. Yeah, very cool. Well, and uh, speaking of Jeff. A work call, sorry. Oh, that's no bad. problem. Uh, just in time for the episode closer. So we'll get to that in a second. Yeah, I like this. Thank you guys so much for joining us for our Blue Planet character creation episode. Jeff, can you uh, tell people where they can find you and anything else that you want to remind people of sure. about yourself? Of course. Um, you can uh, look up Biohazard on our website, biohazardgames.us, uh, and you can reach me directly at jdbarber at gmail.com or you can follow me on twitter at biohazard jeff wonderful and how about yourself rich well you can uh, find me on i'm on twitter a lot you can find me there uh at for descent into midnight you can find me there at at dim rpg you can also find me at my that'll have a link over to my regular twitter account which is harder for people to remember umbral walker um, you can also find me at the YJ files on Twitter. That's the most direct way to get a hold of me there. And um, you can find me there. And thank you to everyone for listening. And please join us next time for our discussion episode. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts and guests, or even some of our character sheets. Character Creation Cast can be found on Twitter at CreationCast. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used in today's guests can also be found in the show notes. If you like the systems discussed and wish to purchase them, links to the product can be found in the show notes. Also, check the notes or the website for cool stuff to go with each character, such as dice or mixtapes. Thanks for joining us, and remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation, so go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like Campaign. The Campaign Podcast is an actual play podcast where a small, consistent group of Chicago nerds get together to record role-playing games. It's hosted by Cat Cool and is currently set in the Star Wars universe using the Edge of the Empire gaming system. Join Kat as she leads a team of improvisers, James D'Amato, John Patrick Cohen, and Johnny O'Mara, on a character-driven storytelling campaign narrative.